It's a beacon of stability in the Horn of Africa with the constitution, free elections and economic growth. But Somaliland wants to be officially recognized as an independent state, finally breaking the chain with Somalia. But how can it convince its troubled neighbor and the African Union? It took a brutal war of succession and the fall of the dictator Siad Bari. But when Somaliland declared independence from Somalia in 1991, it hoped to win official international recognition. Despite two decades of stability and self-reliance, Somaliland says its 3.5 million people are still being denied their freedom. The United Nations says it can't recognize the country until the African Union does so first. But two English cities, Sheffield and Bristol, home to thousands of Somalilanders, have voted to recognize the country. Should the rest of the world do so too? Well, that's a question we'll be asking on today's program, and with me to discuss it are Id Hassan Musa, Director of West London Somaliland Community, Abdi Aziz Hildeban, an author and commentator on Somali affairs, and on the line from South Africa is Professor Abdi Ismail Samata from the School of Geography at the University of Minnesota. Gentlemen, welcome to you all. Thank you. Thank you. I want to start off with you, Id Hassan Musa. So we have city councillors in Sheffield and Bristol making this statement, this gesture. How significant is it? Well, it's, uh, as we all know, it doesn't have a legal weight, but it's, it's symbolic. And it's very significant in terms of actually in sending a sign to the international community that the people of Somaliland, who were in the last 23 years building a, a nation from the scratch, succeeded to actually build a modern in, uh, in state statehood, hold in uh, the, held actually few elections, a parliamentary election, uh, two in, in local elections and two presidential elections. All that with in uh, free and fair elections actually declared by, by the international observers that actually that nation, peace-loving people in the Horn of Africa, the Somalilandis, do deserve an international actually re-recognition. When you because say re-recognition, mm -hmm. um, what exactly do you mean and what would it enable you to do that you're not able to do at this particular point in time after 23 years of self-declared independence? Actually re-recognition I say because Somaliland was a country that actually gained independence from the United Kingdom on the 26th of June 1960. It was the fourth country in Africa to become independent from the colonial in uh, powers, mm -hmm. in, together with Madagascar. Somalia was the sixth on the 1st of July 1960. And, and your government voluntarily joined with um, Brit or Italian Somalia, or Somaliland, to become Somalia. And then, of course, in 1991, you seceded after uh, some terrible uh, bloodshed. Yeah. But why do you need official re-recognition now, given that you are developing, that you've had free and fair elections, that you haven't had chaos, and there are lots of people who want to do business with you. Yeah, actually, let me in, uh, go back to the history, because in uh, the, may, maybe a correction there, mm -hmm. Somaliland and Somalia, they united yes. and formed the Somali Republic. Yes, indeed. Somalia was one part of the, uh, of the Union. Two countries came together, yes. Somaliland and Somalia, and they formed the Somali Republic. Mm -hmm. And judiciary and legally, that country used to be called the Somali Republic and it became defunct on the 18th May 1991 when the Somalilanders, in the same way they joined voluntarily in union with Somalia, withdraw from that union because of the experience in the 31st years that they were on the, on, in, in, uh, with, in, the, in, the, in the union. So, in the traditional leaders of Somaliland came together from all the corners of Somaliland and decided to withdraw from the Union and build... As you feel it was your right to do. So let me put that to you, Abdi Aziz Hildeban. Mm -hmm. Given what happened, that it was an initial voluntary agreement to form the Somali Republic, and then they had these 36 years, many of them hell, why should your brothers not be allowed not be fully, fle fully recognized by the international community? I mean, um, certainly 
I would like to begin in its, I mean, to establish deeply and firmly independent state, whatever it's called, Somaliland, is not really head, heading the right direction. In what way? In what way? I would like to explain to you more. I mean, we have agreed in 1960s, as he has said uh, earlier, that Somaliland and Somalia joined and made this statement saying that Somaliland and Somalia will or, or shall remain forever united, uh, united and uh, in a new independent democratic and unitary republic where the name is. Where well, then we get a coup, yes. uh, we get an overthrow of the government, right. 1969, and then we have Siad Barre for 22 years. Yes. You know, and then we have uh, the punishment of the people who now live in Somaliland. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean so many people, many people still continues and, and continue to say that th there has been a punishment, I mean, in, in Somalia in general. In, uh, in in Somaliland and, and I mean in, in northern Somalia, yeah. um, but what I believe is the people that are now saying or claiming that or make that and, and the people that making I mean, the, the people that is making that statement yeah. is were part of what happened in Somalia. Unless unless they agree with us that uh, whatever went wrong, we, we we need to come together again, discuss what went wrong. But why would? <laughs> Somalia and Somaliland be better together than separate if Somaliland wants to go its own way haven't got, I mean, they got the right to self-determination yeah, they've been doing their own I mean, thing for 23 years I mean and as you have said I mean they have the right to to have their self-determination but the question is I mean the the so-called Somaliland territory now they control less than 60 percent I mean there is other other people that won't let the, the current leaders of Somaliland. Who are those people? They, 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 are, they are from uh, uh, Katuma state of Somalia. They fought each other and well even, bl I mean, and, and, and Margaret state. And there is another elderly state, which I think Abdi, Abdi Ismail knows better than I. Well, the question is whether those problems that you say they have are a reason to stop them mm -hmm. having international recognition. Let's put this to Professor Abdi uh, in South Africa. Professor, what do you make of this, the vote by those two English cities and the discussion we're having here? Because, of course, Somalilanders say we've earned the right to self-determination. Uh, many Somalis in Somalia say we're better together. Well, the first thing I would like to say to my two compatriots is that the history they are presenting is, by and large, inaccurate. How? That's the first thing. Uh, I'll, I'll explain. Uh, one, uh, it wasn't uh, the northern Somalis only who were going to Mogadishu to unite. There was a movement both in the north and in the south because the British, the Italians, the French, the Ethiopians split the Somali people's territory into virtually five colonies. So it was a colonially imposed division of, uh, of territory, not a Somali set. That's the first thing to note, uh, which means that Somali voluntary Somali agreements as free people supersede the colonial division of labor. So if the British and the Italians did this, Somalis actually freely and voluntarily came together to create a nation state out of a people who share all the cultures that any two human groups can share. So that Somali agreement supersedes and therefore nullifies the colonial territories unless we want to worship the colonial project. That's the first thing to note. But the, let me the interrupt you for a second, note. Professor, because of course the African Union talks about the inviolability of borders, those being the colonial borders, which is one reason why it doesn't want to allow the Somalilanders to go their own way. Are you saying the African Union is right when it talks about the inviolability of these borders? No, no, it's, it's, it's actually different. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> the African Union in 1964 wrote that particular uh, edict which you just stated. What has happened is that here are two voluntary people who were voluntarily unified before the colonial division of labor, who said we want to be a Somali nation state. That's the first thing. What the folks in Hargeisa, the so-called capital, are arguing is that they were separate people. 
I want to just uh, sort of uh, tell you one thing, that I actually come from that region called Somaliland or northern Somalia. Mm -hmm. And people like myself who are articulating a different agenda for the Somali people are not welcome in Hargeisa. So if you are talking about free and fair elections, there has to be an open debate where local people in the so-called Somaliland who are for separation and who are for union are able to ventilate their ideas without intimidation and freely. Well, the the last um, referendum, of course, was held in 2001, and according to official records, 97 or so percent of people said, yes, we want to be free, we want official recognition. Would you say that's a bogus result? What do you think would happen if there was a free and fair referendum now? I, what, what before, you know, if, 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 a, if a nation or a society wants to make some major decisions, you just don't call a referendum. First of all, you have a debate about what the issues are, and then you put that to the ballot. And then so there was absolutely no debate about whether we should separate or remain. There was no debate about that. That's the first thing to note. The second thing to note is that by saying that they have been brutalized, I so happen to have served in the prison of that dictator that you noted. I was a prisoner of that as a, as a schoolboy oh, in Barry. the north. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so it's not like somebody who was in cahoots with that regime. It was an abhorrent regime. But if you actually look, it wasn't the people of Hargeisa and Bura only who were punished, as others in the country have been punished since and then. Absolutely. And so the kind of a regime dominated by the military, the prime minister of which was from the town of Berbera in the so-called Somaliland. That was the last prime minister of Siad Berbera's regime, mm -hmm. who threatened the people of Mogadishu that if they don't behave themselves, they will teach them the same lesson that they have te taught the people of Argesia. So right, Professor, for a moment, thank you. Thank you very much for giving us that background, Professor. Uh, let me bring uh, you back into this, Ita Hassan Musa. Do you recognize the picture that the Professor is painting? And would you have any problem with a free, fair, and open debate which Somalilanders like?